Good evening and a very warm welcome to the Grassroots Weekend, the show I'm always bound to in this chair, aren't I? Uh, welcome to the show, Matt Lee, of course. And as you can notice, there's only one chair there, there's only one chair here. I'm sitting in the hot seat. Unfortunately, no young commentators this evening. Apologies once again, I had to cancel it myself this time. It wasn't the youngsters who would cancel it, it was me. Um, so, once, a big, once again, a big apology, and I'm just checking on... This is make sure, because sometimes it has a habit of running out. Anyway, it's on, it's recording, this is our SoundCloud class, and you are DXTL TV from the Touchlands. So once again, welcome to the show, and a big apologies for our young commentators, because I've had a nightmare of a day. I'm fighting the doctors, when you hear this now, I'm fighting the doctors regarding the parachute jump, or the skydive, and also... Um, my car went into service MOT and it was a nightmare. It was basically all day. So I had to cancel the young commentators because I knew they'd have been stood out there waiting and I just couldn't do it. So I just said, look, let's put this one off and I'll explain to our viewers and our listeners why they haven't appeared tonight. So they'd probably be disappointed, just like me, but I want to be on the safe side. I didn't want them standing outside. I didn't know what the weather was going to be like. So... I decided to do the show myself because I could get there later and lo and behold it was later and they would have been standing outside. Anyway, my car passed the MOT, great, fantastic. Then it went into the service and I was walking backwards and forwards because it didn't have the car. So I went back to the garage and I dropped the form off at the doctor's because it was close to the garage. So the scenario is I'm coming into the two stories now so just bear with me while I have a sip of tea, very interesting, this is the grassroots show, talking football, but I'll explain this because it's our hearts of gold initiatives for grassroots football. Anyway, car goes in, forms have gone into the doctors, they'll ring me back ASAP, so this was after two walks by the way, because I forgot the forms, so I had to walk back another two mile to take the forms back when I dropped the car off, silly me, didn't bring the forms with me. Anyway, now they're safely in the doctors now, hopefully to get signed. Then, I sit down and wait for my MOT, that's cleared. Then I get a phone call from the doctors, they're refusing to sign it, because they don't want responsibility. So I wanted to speak to a doctor in question, or I wanted to speak to the manager of the surgery, and they're going to get me to ring back. <clears throat> so, while I was waiting all day, I got in touch with my consultant, who did the operation, they couldn't sign the form, <coughs> but they were lovely, they were absolutely fantastic. And the secretary came down to meet me with another form, just in case to be on the safe side, I got someone signed the form, but I got the phone call, they could not sign it either. And the consultant was annoyed at the way the doctors were treating me and should have signed the form anyway, because there is a disclaimer on there. <coughs> They're not liable if something happened to me, <coughs> excuse me, or anyone else who did a jump on the medical form. Anything can happen, can't it? It doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, they wouldn't sign it because they did not want to be liable if something happened to me. So I've had a right go, and I've in, been in touch with the, the skydiving centre. They're a little bit annoyed as well. Um, are the doctors refusing to sign all medical forms? I can't understand it because I put to them... When you go in from an operation, it's a disclaimer you sign because the doctors aren't responsible. And that was a, <clears throat> a totally different thing they said. I couldn't understand it. You know, I really can't at the moment what is going on. I've got to send the letter over. I don't know what says state in the letter. As soon as I get that letter off my surgeon, fa pa pass it on to the parachute centre. But it's one of those, it's in the balance. And I just don't know. Now, there's many people out there, you'd always see on social media, you hear great stories on the news where they've passed medicals or they've had medical tests, the doctor signed the form. They've gone on these people to do wonderful things, but that looks like it's coming to an end now because doctors are also refining, re refusing to sign any medical form for parachute jumps, parachutes, hang lads, what, whatever it is now. They're not getting involved, so commiserations to me and everyone else out there at the moment but let's hope the consultant's letter works and they agree with it 
Um, it's only five weeks, six weeks on Tuesday since I've had the operation. Um, and July the 10th is the day for the skydive. Now, if it is cancelled and it is because they think it's too soon, then I want to go on a little bit, wait a little bit longer. I don't want to give up. Um, and I'm going for that one again. But one thing for sure is Hadrian's Wall, 3rd, 4th, and 5th of August. There's no one to sign a form there. I'm going for that. And I'm tenfold going for that. I really am determined. So everyone who sponsored me will carry on because that was the deal anyway. Going on to Hadrian's Wall, that was the main, more to me, more challenge to me because it's 85 mile over the three days. And also while I was waiting for the car, I was that late for the simple reason is it, they'd done all the um, service and then they found that a rat or rats had been underneath my bonnet chewing all the wires and I had to pay more money to get them repaired. Honestly, it's just, you couldn't believe the way the day has panned out um, in my sense. You look at me, I've got the Hadrian's Wall passport, got the A to Z. I didn't have an A to Z from the skydive, um, but I am really determined I'm going for that one. And let's just see what happens over the skydive, but I just thought your viewers need to know for the Heart of Gold initiatives and our listeners as well. Can't believe what is happening with the doctors now. I, you know, they've got all the medical details. They pass me fit. Give me a medical, pass me fit. If I, they think I'm okay, oh, let me go for it. Let me go for it. Don't take that away from me. And that's what they're doing. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. And I just, I, I don't know where to, to begin at the moment. So let's just hope. It pans out and I can do this. I really, really do want to do it because it's part of the challenge. But I'll keep you informed on what's happening. Anyway, there's our passport there. Look, get them all stand, stamped when we visit each town or each post a Hadrian's Wall. So I'm looking forward to that one. I really am. Anyway, grassroots football. It's all back tomorrow. Respect. Saturday, Sunday. Cheers for that. All the kids are out playing their football. So what we do need is you to make sure that the referees are looked after. Give them loads of support, not stick. Loads of encouragement, not abuse. And loads of sideline, good behaviour. Not verbally abusive, not aggressive, no bullying, no racist comments. Just enjoy your day if the kids are out there to play. And what a great message that is. Because we see it week in, week out, and last week we talked negative about coaches, weren't we? Because I did spot that. Um, and I think it's wrong, some of these coaches should never be running teams the way they act on a touchline. Um, it was unbelievable to say the least, telling the kids to get out the team if they didn't want to play for them. These kids were 7 nil down. It was frightening, to be honest, it really was. Um, you're supposed to give the kids encouragement. What a coach is there for? A coach is, a coach is there to develop the children. That's what I think it is. Not about winning, not about scoring goals, because that's what this was all about. This wasn't about the kids. This was about the, the coaches, and I could see it in them. Honestly, it was frightening. So how do you feel? What are your thoughts on coaching? What do you feel when the coaches go out there and start shouting and screaming at the kids? Um, it should be uncomfortable for parents and so it should be you're there to develop these kids and I'd like to hear a few coaches as well please because we see some great coaches out there as well you can tell that they're there 100% for the kids to develop them and make them better players God, some of these kids do not develop until later on and these are only youngsters these are under 11s what I was watching <coughs> and as I say could not believe it but I'll be out again out and again monitoring them and this time I'll report it to um, the organiser and then also to the county FAs because I do believe we should have some sort of card to give out to state that they need to go in for another course and update and show them how to be coaches and what it's all about just go on the website we know that but they won't because once they got that level one, level two, that means that they're the coach, they passed the levels, and it means that they're 100% brilliant. And it's not, 
It really isn't. We don't want that. We want to develop the kids. We want to the kids in. They were going to be comfortable. We want to see them comfortable. We want to see them getting some game time. We want to see smiles on their faces. And we want to see the parents go home happy. Now, every week I always turn around and have a go at the parents. Well, not every week. Because it praise some good behaviour towards the referees from parents as well. <clears throat> but this was about coaches last week. Um, and this is about coaches this evening as well. You need to go out there and give the kids that encouragement that they're looking for, they crave for. And if they are getting beat 7-0, let them come back. Let's try and win the second half. Let's play well. Maybe you're not going to win this game, but you're going to win the hearts of your parents because you're really trying. And that's what it's all about. Kids will always try 100%. You can't take that away from them. You can't knock them and say, if this is the way you're going to play, leave the team. You don't want to play for us, leave the team. We don't need you. What is that message given to kids? I'd love to hear your feedback. As coaches, if you think you're irate towards a child, you think that's the way you behave and you think it's right, maladontextaline.com. Give us some feedback yourselves. Let's get this show on the road. Let's make a difference to these kids. Let's get better coaches, better parents on the touch lines. This is what Don't Cross the Line is all about. Kids enjoying the football and referees enjoying the games they officiate in as well. Regardless of whether the age or age or whatever it is, we do not want to see referees being asked to basically leave the game by the verbal abuse. Re referees have, have enough verbal abuse. That's what I should have said. But let's get together, let's make a difference. Let every one of us realise what we're doing from the sidelines. We don't want to be sideline referees. We don't want to be coaches from the sideline as well, always shouting the coaches. And coaches, you need to realise that it's all about the kids playing football. And this game is about development. It's also about smiling faces, kids being happy. Do you know what? If they lose, they lose, they win, they win, they draw, they draw. That's what it's all about. We just go on to the next game and see where we can improve the kids for next next week. Yes, the different teams, but come on, if you're coming up a tough, uh, as a tough team, you know it's going to be hard for the kids to perform and try and win them over. But, you, you know, it happened to me many years ago. I changed the team. I turned around a team who had nothing. You could have made a film of it, actually. It could have been great. But honestly, I've got the new kits. The parents were all a little bit... How do you say, disappointed at the way, not about their kids being the, the way they were playing, but the way they didn't get the encouragement, didn't get the support from a coach. So I took over and I gave them that support and I made decent players out of them just by being there, believing in them. That's what they need. Kids need encouragement as well, week in, week out. Come on, you've got to do it. You were a child once, you know what I'm talking about. I wanted encouragement right the way through my life, but you'll always remember the bad times that you had. And there's plenty of those, you know, because those kids will grow up to remember when they were getting shouted at, when they were chased off a football pitch. They don't want those memories, they want good memories, and the more good memories we can give them, as a coach, as a mum and dad, parent, grandparent, whatever it may be, we can give them that encouragement and those good memories. we just got to realise that ourselves and just make sure that you, when you turn up to a football match, you respect everyone on and off the field of play, especially our referees, because respect is here to stay. And it was lovely today, you know, at the garage when I was there, just have a sip of tea, excuse me a second. I bumped into a, a referee who was going to really do, make the big time. Joe Johnson, absolutely top man, top class. And I'm going to have a little bit of a meeting with him. I'm going to have a catch up, I'm going to send an email, do that this evening. It was lovely to see, he got talking, he's asked me all about the respect and what we do and how we can help and boy he's going to help and I'm amazed up with him. Um, great, it, 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 you know these are the people that you do meet and that was the best, just a bit of good news that I had at the garage anyway or throughout the day because it has been a really traumatising day and I just need to know what is in this letter, I really do. How am I going to get this letter? Well, I've got to try and ring up the consultant, the surgeon, and see what we can do with it, and, and just hope that it goes. If not, I'll make plans, I'll carry on, and until if I have to go and have a private medical to see if I'm all right, I'll do that as well. 
fit to fly, bang, stamp, that's all it needs. Doctors, please, we need some of you on here to explain to us when it says that you're not responsible for what I do, then you can sit back. No one's going to sue any doctor if something happened to me. No one whatsoever. That is down to me. That's what I paid the money for, to raise money, to try and give it a charity that we're on and hearts of gold, some life. But okay, it's very soon. It was supposed to be in August, skydive. Um, brought that forward because we thought the light might go and we're there all day and we never get the done, the walk done because it's over the three days. So come on, give us some feedback, let us know if there's any doctors listening in, what can I do? What can I do? It's not much time now to go, but I'm going for it. Anyway, if you're out and about at the football, it could be a tournament, summer league, whichever it may be, it could be a friendly. Let's just make sure that when you go out there, you applaud the children, you applaud the referees, you congratulate the referees at the end, you thank them for being there. They're in kiss, they're there, the kids are in kiss. That is what grassroots football in every league is all about. And I'm looking forward to seeing some great football this coming weekend at Geoffrey Humble with the River Summer League. I really am. Um, the time has flown because I've gone on a little bit. We've only got like three minutes left, but we'll get through as much as we possibly can. We want, look at that, the hotel rooms as well. That's Adrian's wall, so that's neither here nor there because I'm doing that and I'm training for it already. Um, any skydivers, any any walkers, get in touch with myself, not at don'textheline.com. Anyone who's a coach, get in touch again. Let us know your thoughts, your feelings. We will get onto Sunday's show. We'll talk about that. The reason I'm saying Sunday's show is because I have a Class F referee coming in, and he'll explain what the Class F is. Um, oh, class F, Class Three F referee. Class F, Class Three F. And he's going to explain what it's all about. Um, new class formation, I suppose, from the county FAs. Um, and he's going to be talking about sideline behaviour and how he developed and made him to where he is. He's a coach as well, see. Now, I put the question to him. Is he a better coach than a referee or a better referee than a better coach or a referee than a coach? Whatever it may be. But anyway, what's the show tomorrow? Billy Vaughan, and I'm sure the will be going, oh, quite on Mersey side. They all know a Billy and his team that he runs. So it should be a very interesting show, folks, tomorrow. And I want your thoughts on it as well. But it's all about grassroots football. It's all about respect. It's all about keeping our referees within the game and developing the children. That's what we need to do. So if you're out and about tomorrow or Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there is midweek games coming up, please just respect that referee. Make it a difference when you're out and about, please. Let the referees officiate and just let the kids play. That's what I want to see. But I'll be out and about, as I say, tomorrow I'll be watching um, watching coaches as well, watching you, watching them. That's what it's all about, seeing them and seeing if they are giving the encouragement. Because I think sometimes you need to give some feedback about the coaches as well. It's always been about the parents, the mums and dads, we're getting some stick, but you've got to give fair play to fair play and encouragement towards the people who are trying their best as well. And that includes some mum and dads who are just out there to encourage the kids. That is what clapping is all about. And that's what I like to see from some of the coaches as well. All the moves, congratulate them, encourage them. And if they are giving a bad pass away, don't worry about to get it right next time. It's one of those things. Same as a referee, a referee will admit sometimes, well, not all the time, that they've made a mistake, but they're only human. And they'll tell you at the end of the game, they're on their own, they try their best to get every decision right, but they're going to miss some, aren't they? So you have to take a back seat, let them get on with it, let them enjoy the day as well. OK, we come to the end of our show. Thank you very, very much indeed for tuning in to us. As I say, we'll be back again tomorrow evening with a referee coach, um, Billy Vaughan, at 7pm. So I want your thoughts and I want you to listen into that. And I'm sure we'll get a lot of feedback as well. Billy's looking forward to it. And I'm sure he'll have some answers to those people who get the feedback as well. Right, so in the meantime, we'll tune in. We'll be back again tomorrow evening at 7 for myself. Marley and all the team here at the Grassroots Show. Don't cross the line. And Respect Programme, as well as Hearts of Gold. We'll see you tomorrow 
that's seven. Good night, God bless.